our first match of the day, and as you see, Empanizado will await the winner of our next match. It's uh, it's going to be exciting to see if Just Saiyan can perhaps avenge Muzzy. I do know that the Radiance guys have been practicing a ton, um, and specifically, like, Muzzy and Saiyan, they're just part of that uh, practice group that likes to collaborate with Europe Grandmasters. I know that, um, in particular, Saiyan and... Uh, Muzzy are very close with Hunter Ace and that practice. So uh, we'll see if he's able to carry over that uh, that momentum or perhaps that spirit that we've seen him uh, make really deep runs uh, in the previous years. Uh, but for now, he's going up against Eddie, and Eddie is one of the most consistent players in America's for the past two and a half years, dating back to the uh, HCT season in 2018 that led to 2019. Um, and Eddie has a fairly similar lineup to some of the stuff that we've seen before. He's got Demon Hunter, Warlock, Druid, and Priest. And Saiyan's got three of those similarities. Uh, he's got Priest, Warlock, and Demon Hunter, but he also has Warrior. Um, and it looks like that Warrior was banned. So I am very curious to see if this pans out, because uh, we've seen a lot of different classes banned, but Warrior is not the most popular one by any stretch of the imagination. No, n not uh, particularly po popular, um, but uh, I'm curious to see why he banned it. Because he does have some good matchups against Warrior, but I guess he does have some bad matchups against Warrior. So um, maybe it was uh, close with something else like the Galakron Warlock, for instance, uh, because Sand did ban away the Galakron Warlock from Eddie. Um, so we won't be seeing that from his side. Sand does or uh, Eddie does not have a warrior on his side. Instead, he's more focused on combo decks, it feels. Uh, he's got combo Demon Hunter. He's got the Spell Druid, so both the uh, kind of meta Kael'thas decks, uh, and then Resurrect Priest, which not really a combo deck, but there's cool interactions that could be called combos. Could <laughs> you play two cards in one turn? Because um, you play two cards in one turn, or like that's, that's you know, technically combo according to Hearthstone definition. Yeah, that's right. Just like everything is tempo. Playing a minion <laughs> onto the board, that's tempo. A deck that plays minions, tempo deck. Yeah. So then, what is spell mage? Uh, well, not tempo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it 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 summons minions through spells, so <laughs> tempo mage. Oh, Tempo Mage. Actually, yeah, because it has, because Firelands Portal was played in Tempo Mage, and Apexis Blast is just like Firelands Portal. Right. It's a Tempo card. Flawless and logic. It's included in a Tempo deck. Tempo Mage, not Spell Mage. Good call, Dan. That was one Thank that you. I missed. Thank you. That's what I'm here for. Uh, I, you know, when I take a look a little bit more at the numbers, including the Swiss portion, uh, Warrior has been banned a handful of times. It's actually been banned as much as Priest has been. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it puts it around that second tier of bans. The first tiers, of course, are Demon Hunter, Warlock, and Druid. And then enters Priest and Warrior. And then after that, it's kind of like once in a while you ban Rogue and Mage. Um, and maybe Hunter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into a Demon Hunter Mirror to start things off. This mirror is not, not exactly a true, mirror. a true mirror because it's one is more tempo driven and one's more combo driven. And it makes me feel like uh, Sane has to get off to a very quick start so he can uh, get on the right foot here. Looks a little tired, if anything. Oh, he's Rubbing probably been eyes. practicing. Staying up late, grinding the card stone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... So what's interesting from Saiyan's perspective is his Tempo Demon Hunter uh, does not include the Frozen Shadow Weaver, um, which his Galakron Warlock does include uh, two copies of. So he had his eyes on that tech for his other decks, and a lot of times the Tempo Demon Hunters, if they're expecting other Demon Hunters, will tech in a Frozen Shadow Weaver uh, because it helps you a lot, not only against uh, the mirror matchup, the true mirror matchup, but also against combo. Uh, so I find that an interesting deck choice that he has it in one of his decks. So obviously Demon Hunter is on his radar. Uh, maybe not a hard counter, uh, but doesn't have it in, in his own Demon Hunter as a mirror tech. Just yeah, food for thought. It's definitely... Uh, well, you know I love food, TJ, but I don't like thinking. So this is um, a 
clash of ideals. But I do agree. I do agree. And, and I think that just saying with this kind of start, is he just going to play the Cidic Swamp Boost for Tempo here? I think he is the more aggressive deck, and I think that you don't want to give any kind of footing to Eddie. Yes, you would like to remove one of the weapons, but if your opponent spends the entire turn clearing Swamp Boost, you still dealt three damage to your opponent. Yeah. With some upside. Yeah. It, obviously, you'd love to get rid of one of the Aldraki Warblades, um, but there's two of them. So if he's really going to swing, like, get that huge life swing later on in the game, it's going to happen to whether or not you play it or not. But one other thing to note, Sam plays two Acidic Swamp Boos. So he will have another one at some point in the game. Unless, of course, Eddie kills him before he draws the second one. But Well, it doesn't look like that is going to be the case. But if every single card um, you trade with your face, you are going to die pretty quickly. So Eddie... Picks up the Aldruis, which is definitely a good card to hang on to. It might be one of your tickets to bailing yourself out of a tough situation. Aldruis, quite possibly one of the strongest cards in Demon Hunter. It's... You know what I just realized? Altruist, the outcast. Altruist being the base of altruistic. Hmm. Okay. Altruistic like is being like generous. Being, being, yeah, selfless. But he's also an outcast, and you play outcast cards with him. Yeah, but yeah, and he's an outcast, so he doesn't. He's he's not even part. Like, how are you selfless, but also not by yourself? It's right. Like a it's like a paradox. But he's ah. not even a demon. Demon. I know, that's weird. I don't know. Sorry for that rant, but that just I just noticed that and it kind of blew my mind a little bit. What a rant it was. Food for thought, Dan. <laughs> well, you know how I, I, I like thinking and hate food. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Well, Another Seder Overseer being picked up here for saying he, actually, he does have a fairly tough decision here. I think Kane is completely legitimate to play here because it's hard for the Demon Hunter to clear it. Five damage is not easy to come by. But the Seder Overseer has a ton of upside um, by summoning one more stats on the board. It's a 4-2 and a 2-2 that comes out. And you still get to play Kane the next turn anyways. Um, and hero power and get that through. So it's not an easy decision. I like the Kane. I just think it's harder to remove. And it's clear that Eddie's kind of been on like a remove and pass kind of pacing, which mm -hmm. uh, Saiyan wants to break. Because if Saiyan can get one minion ahead, that's when this deck starts to become really scary. Also, there's an inevitability uh, the longer the game goes for A to find ways to bounce back in life through forms of lifesteal. Uh, if he has Aldrachi Warblades or I-Beam, he has ways to rebound his life pretty dramatically. There's not a great way to clear off this cane. He would have to second slice coin. So it's gonna ignore uh, it. Cool. Eddie's pointing face. What? Really? Nice. Interesting. I feel like he's gonna take a lot of damage. So, what is he threatening by doing this? I mean, I guess he. Oh, actually, he's setting up an outdoors, right? So I he's trying to uh, create a setup where he can go for dramatic swings with Altruis and go completely off and find a way to win the game the next few turns. I mean, I like it. I think Eddie's in a, a tricky spot. He has cards like Inner, Inner Demon um, to help him rebound, but he doesn't have the lifesteal through the Aldrachi Warblade. So if he's going for a gold, Skull Gold Dance set up into Altruis or any um, variation thereof, He's just hoping that he has two turns to swing this. And I don't know if he does. That Zephyr's definitely not active. So he has Altruist, Zephyrus, and Second Slice, and Coin Consume Magic. That's enough to clear the board. 
Mm -hmm. And that would set him up nicely for uh, Skull of Gul'dan next turn. Yeah, he actually doesn't even need a coin to consume magic. It would be nice to restrict your opponent's mana, though, because you are afraid of dying uh, yeah. in the next few turns. Obviously, they, if you clear the board, he won't be able to burst you down for 14, but that metamorphosis has something to say about it. Demons. Yeah. Demons. Well, the consume magic is the silence card draw. Do you see what must be done? I think it's worth it just for the draw in general. Ah, maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, I guess. I would say maybe that maybe it's worth it, to be honest. To right. play the Consume Magic, just because um, if you're planning on Skull of Ghoul Danning next turn, then you would be isolating Consume Magic uh, like more towards it, it wouldn't have the outcast effect I don't know I well, guess holding on to the coin gives you more flexibility with Skull of Gudan it, it's, it's I don't know it's tough well there is a two turn lethal here for Sam but he can't really play around lifesteal if he does that so if he attack if he metamorphosis and hits for six this turn Demon. then he could go down to eight Demon. then he would have the hero power for metamorphosis number two uh, and then go for the Adept finish. But if Eddie plays like a single lifesteal card, I think that's entirely <laughs> thrown off. So Eddie has the draw at the top, and he also has Skull of Gul'dan. And if so, then uh, Eddie wins, because he's going to lifesteal and push enough damage to set up a two-turn lethal. Yeah, and he's got a bunch of outs in that regard. Uh, he's got both the uh, I-beams as well as both the Aldraki Warblades. Uh, mana burn would also work. Uh, you are correct. That's why Saiyan didn't attack with his weapon. Yeah. Because mana burn would only leave him with five mana, which would just leave enough for attack plus glaive bound. Right. Um, so that would also block it. So, Skull Gul'dan. He's thinking if he wants to play the Sigil Runner first, and then coin into Skull. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think if he draws Mana Burn, oh no, he yeah, if he draws Mana Burn through a card draw source, he would need that Mana <gasps> Crystal. He didn't hit Life Steal. Okay, but he still has another draw with the Nos Engineer, and if you like you said, if he gets Mana Burn, that is a chance to stay alive. Yep. Oh, I mean! <laughs> and Zayn sees Eddie targeting his own minion. And what a series of events. Zayn has seven mana. But I think unless he draws something for Altruis. No, oh, you, you need wow. Um, so he... He has he's, 11 uh, damage, he's right? Yep, he's short. <laughs> and Altruist doesn't have a way to combo twice because the Adept is too expensive. All right, so how do you win from this point? You hope that Eddie has zero damage in hand. You, metamor or you uh, metamorphosis face, uh, <clears throat> attack for two to the face, and then Glavon add up the Altruist. So then you put him down to uh, six. Yeah, I think that's the right play. I think you would shut down the Altruist and hope he doesn't have damage, but Eddie has yeah. uh, the Inner Demon. He's got Metamorphosis. There's a lot of ways he could uh, win this and claim oh, the victory. He should be playing the Battle Fiend. Oh, never mind. He doesn't have the mana for it. Sorry. For the, delay, the hero power was delayed wow. on his attack. Such a narrow margin, but really well played on both ends. And Eddie, <laughs> another one just to add insult to injury. Yep. That is going to wrap up game one. Really well done here by Eddie. And Saiyan drops the Demon Hunter Mirror. 
Yeah, but that was by the, the thinnest of margins because just that turn, like the, the sequence of turns, right? We, we debated um, coining out Consume Magic to cycle an extra card with the coin. We also debated Crimson Sigil Runner playing that before coining out Skull to Gul'dan. Um, like both of those decisions ended up mattering because uh, the, the coin was needed to uh, get out enough card draw or have enough cards reduced to hit the I-Beam. I guess regardless, he hits the I-Beam. Like, no matter when he draws that sequence of spells, right, he hits the I-Beam. Um, but, you know, let's say that was Mana Burn. Maybe he doesn't hit that. Uh, so he gave himself the maximum chance to hit the card that he needed. And, uh, yeah, well played. Yep, well played. So that's just the first game of this series. We're going to take a brief intermission. When we come back, we're going to have uh, San versus Eddie, game number two in Group B of, of the Hearthstone Grandmasters for the America's Day number two broadcast. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. I'm TJ. I'm joined by America's Grandmaster, Bloody Face. Bloody Face, how are you doing today? Doing all right, I guess. How you doing, TJ? I don't know, man. I've been feeling a little bit emotional today. I have the days like that, too. It's got you down. Do you ever just ask yourself, I mean, what's the point of doing all these interviews? Life is already just questions and answers. Why add more, you know? I've been asking myself that for years. Ever since my first championship, you know, they asked me some questions. I gave some answers. You guys keep asking me the same questions every time. You're right. There's no good answer, TJ. I mean, what even is Hearthstone? Is it some dystopian representation of the complex problems our fragile, corrupted society faces? <sighs> Melancholy. Exactly. So you excited for Grandmasters? Hey everybody, welcome back to the Heart welcome back to the Hearthstone Grandmasters for the Americas. We are currently in the middle of a series between Just Saiyan and Eddie. Eddie taking a very narrow game one victory over Saiyan in the Demon Hunter Mirror. Uh, and now we will see what is on deck for game number two. 
If you want to follow along, make sure to, of course, uh, follow this channel uh, on YouTube and as well as check out playharsham.com slash esports. So you can go ahead and check out the deck list because that's what we are using right now. Uh, we're getting ready for Game of 2 where Druid is going to be on deck here for Eddie. What will Saiyan choose in response? Um, his best uh, well, he deck has priest. is Priest. Yeah. But did so, he choose Priest? He could also play Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter also decent against uh, uh, Druid, just because you can kill them very quickly. You can kill them. Altruist does uh, some wondrous work against it. Yeah. Demon Hunter still... Uh, if you count both combo and tempo together, have roughly a 60% win rate across all three regions... Um, in week one of Grandmasters against the Demon Hunter, or against the Druid. Uh, so, still a good deck, and I think Sand's just going to cue back the Demon Hunter because it's probably his best, best deck win percentage-wise across the board regardless. Um, and a decent start. Has got a one-drop. Uh, kept Acidic Swamp Ooze as well, just to have a two-drop, I guess. I would have probably, I would have th thrown away Acidic Swamp Ooze, just played Blazing Battle Mage and Gone for something else, but I guess this does give him like max potential. I'm trying to calculate this. He goes Blazing Battle Mage on one. On two, he can go Hero Power, Attack for three, Frenzied Felwing? And he doesn't need a two drop. I don't know. I guess if I his think, Blazing Battle I think Mage what's gets important removed. important is you just have a curve. Uh, the Frenzied yeah. Felwing is, the is probably the most important card because it helps you generate. Massive tempo. Wow. Yeah. So there's actually a little bit to think to consider here, which is the Crimson Center Runner. Of course, you want to play that because it's uh, outcast and you draw a card. Do you want to coin out this battle mage? Yes, 100%, because it guarantees you a Frenzied Fellwing next turn. The only way it could not is Moonfire plus removal. Because either way, you have two attack hitting. And then a, a hero power, and and you deal three, so frenzy fell away. So I like this setup. This makes sense to me. Oh, mm -hmm. so if you hero power and you play frenzy fell wing, it's still just three attack. Right, so yeah. if you if you play acidic swamp ooze, it's only more vulnerable to crystal power. Yeah. Same with battle fiend. Like that's also three attack. They're all three attack. Battle fiend lets you push two this turn. Acidic swamp ooze gets the man out of the way, so you can be more efficient the next couple turns. Huh. Who knew playing aggressive decks could be so hard, Dan? Yeah. <laughs> it's There's a lot of choices, surprisingly, um, with Demon Hunter, because you have so many, like, one and two mana plays, and mm -hmm. um, they they are rather committal. Um, like, once you play things onto the board, um, you're kind of, like, committed to, like, being more aggressive or being more outcast-oriented and, like, trying to combo your cards. and. Uh, obviously, the punishment of Outcast is pretty severe if you've like messed up your hand positioning and whatnot. So, uh, you know, a lot of the high-level players in Hearthstone like the concept of Demon Hunter a lot because, you know, for one thing, aggro seemed to not really exist in Hearthstone for quite some time. It was more of like a quicker mid-range deck. Most decks that were like ag ag aggressive had like seven or eight mana cards in it and just didn't really feel like a true aggro deck. Yeah. And then Face Hunter had this like brief time in the sun uh last year where like it was kind of decent and then now it now and then sees plays. Bloody Face for example has uh Face Hunter in his lineup, but it wasn't really commonplace. And now Demon Hunter just like feels like true aggro once more. So, uh, I think a lot of high level players were like kind of missing that aspect of it cuz you know, as much as people love playing control and combo and mid range and everything in between, uh, aggro decks um, are important for the metagame and also pretty fun to play. For some people. I'm one of those people. Dan, you're one of those people too, I think. 
Hmm. I'm actually pretty bad at aggro decks, um, largely because uh, I'm afraid of commitment, DJ. <laughs> I like just holding all my options in my hand and dying. You're, you're afraid to just go all in? I just I just want to die with 10 cards in my hand at all times. Options. <sighs> Dan, sometimes you just got to let loose. There was this meme being passed around on social media about how people finish RPGs and MMOs with like their inventory full, thousands full of potions and, <laughs> and elixirs and revives and stuff. And, and I felt personally attacked because it is my... It, it is my personal goal to have 999 of everything in my inventory by the time I finish the game and not use a single one. T uh, speaking of wow. using your resources and not, Saiyan commits to the Altruist on turn 3. That I wasn't really expecting that. I kind of was thinking uh, Felwing would come down and maybe a Battle Fiend hero power. And I wonder if Saiyan's saying this is just to stop you from playing Glowfly Swarm. Like, if you play Glowfly Swarm, you're going to get hurt. So Eddie would have to uh, pivot from that. Hmm. However, Eddie wasn't going to anyways because he didn't have it in the hand. Instead, he's just going to respond to this. And perhaps because Sand has Warglaive of Azanoth as well, which is 12 damage if it theoretically just goes face every single turn, Sand might say that if I give up the Altruist, I'll still be able to get uh, the game-ending damage I need if I just start to pressure, because if he spends his turn removing this altruist, then he's not developing, and that just puts Saiyan back in the driver's seat. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And he, he's actually pushing a good amount of damage. Like, let's say Eddie did have Glowfly Swarm here, and Eddie had to pivot and clear the altruist instead. Saiyan probably understands that he, <laughs> he would be pushing 8 damage next turn, uh, so he'd bring him down to 14. And he'd be developing three more damage. He push nine damage, so bring it to thirteen. And be able, developing three more damage plus growing damage. So pr basically, would prevent Eddie from ever playing Glow Glow Fire Swarm because he'd be setting up for a two turn lethal. Um, right. So I think that's a heads up play. And now just play your stuff. Acidic Swamp right. is, uh attack him in the face and say go. And this is six, seven, eight. 11 damage on board uh, plus two the next turn would be thirteen. Yeah, this looks tough. Without Starfall, can't really clear this off as Druid. Yeah. And there is no Starfall. And he finds another Moonfire. I think he was really hoping for Overflow, but this is still okay. Looking for Taunts? King Mukla. And Saiyan looking for something to end the game. Finds another Eye Beam. Um. So he has 11 damage right now with the workers of Azanoth. Yeah. He can spend a charge to, say, remove the uh, Salad's Pride. Impatient. Yep. And that won't draw anything because it is a spell druid deck, so it has no minions. Uh, aside from the Kael'thas and the Mount Cellar. So Insane can decide if he wants to remove something, like remove this Mukla, but says, you know what? Go for it. Okay, Bog Beam is a way to remove those minions. He's he needs taunts here, right? And Eddie's hoping for it just based off the summons. No, and one last chance. No, it wouldn't matter anyways because any taunt gets get I beam down. Yeah, from Eddie's perspective, he needed taunts, but uh, yeah. just saying, had pretty much anything on lock, even an Iron Bark. I think he could have dealt with. Um. Just because that would have meant that one less minion was getting removed, so he could have pushed through, and then all he needed was uh, one swing from the uh, Warglaves, which would have been pretty easy for him to manage. So, uh, Sand fights back. I like the way he played that game. Uh, those turns were actually quite tough early oh, on. Oh, yeah. Like, maximizing uh, like mana utilization and damage output, and also opening up his options, like the Altruist play, instead of playing the Battle Fiend, for example. Um, even though it wouldn't have mattered from our perspective, because Eddie didn't even have the Glowfly Swarm, but let's say he did, it would have shut him off from playing that for essentially the rest of the game, uh, just by playing that, which is the goal of Altros anyway, is to deal with the Glowfly Swarm. He just dealt with it proactively instead of waiting for it to actually be played. So, uh, very heads up, I'd say, from, uh, from Saiyan. 
Yeah, overall, I, I would say that um, I think if he if he didn't do that one turn of like developing the altruist, I think he would have been short damage that turn potentially. Although I guess he would have made it up through the I beams uh, dealing extra damage, so. I think he should have been okay either way, but like the fact is that it could have mattered, and a lot of times it does, right? When Druid, like, it could instead of Bog Beam, it could have been Iron Bark, and then he would have been stuck in a, in a trickier position where he can't get through like this uh, exotic so Mount Cellar because it just has so much health. Um, so overall, I, I like the way Saiyan approached that. Now we're going to another tough matchup for Eddie here: Priest versus the Druid. Um, this is the is it is it one of the most one-sided matches we've seen that has a relevant sample size here, DJ? Yeah, it's the it's yeah. Uh, Druid has a twenty-six percent win rate across thirty games. So that is that is a significant sample size, right? Um, and the majority of those games are from Americas because we did have uh, uh, more priests um, than the other regions. Um, so yeah, it, it's <laughs> it's brutal. Taking a look at Saiyan's priest list overall, uh, let me pull it up. He does have for removal, he has double breath of the infinite. He has double holy nova. He also has mass dispel to deal with the big buff boards. And of course the plague of death and soul mirror at the top end. So basically every step of the way, uh, Saiyan has ways to deal with wide board states. Um, where we talked about, you know, how the weakness of Mage, even though they do have a lot of board sweeps, they come much later into the game. You know, it kind of unlocks with Blizzard uh, at 6. Whereas Saiyan can clear a board full of uh, Glowflies as early as turn 3 with Breath of the Infinite. He does have to pick those up, and right now, Eddie just needs some, some ramp to kind of get this hand going. But he has Kael'thas, he has Glowfly Swarm, uh, he has Gift of the Wild. So he needs to get to that point where he's got the mana to be able to play all this stuff. And hopefully he can go off before Saiyan's able to, to get his his uh, AoE. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, so there's there's two approaches, right? One is like, make him have it. Just go for it. This is a really bad matchup. Be aggressive and um, really try to just get there it's an unfavored matchup just might as well play the uh the odds there and try to get that 25 percent chance to, to win mm -hmm. another is what a lot of players end up doing which is trying their best to um specifically uh optimize and play around all kinds of removal like you're talking about and i think that kind of song and dance is so hard i, I and so i think a lot of players when they're playing especially on ladder just go for it. Like, I think if I'm the druid in this position, I just, like, rip it. And I'm like, you know what? If you can't answer the uh, the Glowfly Swarm, that's free 14 damage. And I think that's why I lose a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that your analysis was going to stop there. You're just going to be like, yeah, I was, yeah, I agree with you, Dad. Sometimes you just got to take risks. Well, uh, so, so if we think about it, if you play standard... You have a 25% chance to win based off of our very uh, s small but relevant sample size, right? And if you say that on average they have the card that can beat you X percent of the time, if it's like higher or lower than 25, I think that's worth valuing. Right? Yeah. It's like, okay, he only has like a 20% chance of having the, the AoE to deal with this and I can win the next turn. I think I'm going to try to go for that. So I think a lot of times players uh, go a little bit uh, by those intuition moments, but mm -hmm. sometimes there's a little bit of a math problem that you can solve to help even justify your your uh, first in, uh, first instincts. Yeah, and I'm, those are some of the most uh, those are the, some of the most satisfying moments when it pays off. When you're like, okay, I'm Empanizado. I recognize I have a 15 percent chance to win at best. I'm just going to play to my outs here, um, and you nail it. Unfortunately, so, the likelihood that Saiyan has uh, one of his AOE removals for Glowfly Swarm. Uh, with eight cards drawn and mulliganing for them is much higher really than twenty five percent, because he has four cards in his deck that directly deal with it that cost four mana or less. Um, yeah, I might be able to because yeah. we had ho we're at home TJ and I can just use my PC as is. I actually could use a hypergeometric calculator to to to, to actually hypergeometric uh, crunch those numbers. calculating Frodan. <laughs> Hyper geometric calculator initiate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I just Eddie, know that it's... time here. Is he going to play something? Just an exotic what? mount seller. I, I wasn't really expecting that. It looks like Eddie is dumping his hand so that Kael'thas can have the most godlike turn. To is that the card you want to dump? Why not just nourish for crystals? Yeah, that's no late. That's no way to treat a lady. Yeah, I I don't know. Nourish for crystals seems decent there. Now, granted, let's look at like the removal options for Saiyan. He's got one Shadow or Death, right? So maybe he's also got Galakrond. <laughs> that's a tough one. He, yeah, I, I just valuing the nourish over the exotic mount seller is, is kind of where I question it. Unless he just plans on drawing his entire deck right now, like overflow, overflow, nourish as a, that would draw thirteen cards with those three alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, well, he's got to move. It's it's something that I think you have to go very quickly. Um, one, if there's one point of criticism from the previous series, that Empensado probably took a little bit too long to get started because he's like, "Is this a Kael'thas turn? Let me think for like 20 seconds." It's like, well, you need those 20 seconds to finish your turn, because yeah. there is a realm of possibility where this ends up almost decking out Eddie. Yeah. Oh well, wow, he's just gonna ditch a card. Yeah, he's gonna overdraw here. Okay. Yikes. I think he wanted that fungal fortune. He he's he has ten seconds left. Oh no. Wow, that may be the saddest Kael'thas turn I have seen. <laughs> well, ever. The, que the question for me is, why did he even use the second Iron Bark? If he was, uh, if he was willing to yeah. discard a card anyway, the uh, with the Overflow, I, I guess to to free up hand space. But I, I just wonder what he's trying to draw. Maybe the second Glowfly Swarm. Right. Um, so okay. So maybe the the way Eddie's going about it is, I just want to set up like every turn. A wave of threats. Yeah. I'm gonna draw so that way I play forest aid, pass. Uh, Glowfly swarm, uh, soul of the forest, pass. And like Saiyan will have the first few AOEs, right? He'll have the first clear. He might have that plague of death as a backup. And then the moment uh, Saiyan has to take a suboptimal turn because he doesn't have the right cards to clear, and he can go in for the kill. I feel like that's. Um, the only way I, f I feel like I could understand Eddie's line of play. Otherwise, that was a very inefficient turn that could have been improved um, in a multitude of ways. And I think Eddie, he was in a, he's in a tough spot already. Like, let's not beat around the bush. This is a very bad matchup for Druid. So it was unlikely that he would be able to seize control anytime soon. Yeah. But this is especially painful when uh, it seemed like you had a much better capability of uh, setting up a, a, a powerful board than what Eddie ended up doing. Yeah. Uh, that's tough. Yeah. yeah that being I, said, I get what you mean there of what he's, yeah. of what he's trying to do and set up like waves of threats. <laughs> um, but I feel like, you know, as, as you put it, sometimes you have to take the risk and putting him on one very specific removal by going all in with Kael'thas, building a massive board that doesn't get shut down by Breath of the Infinite or Holy Nova, forcing him to have Plague of Death specifically, or Mass Dispel plus one of those. I think it's like a higher percent chance than with wave after wave after wave. I don't know. <clears throat> it's it's a lot. Of, some of it's based off feelings. Some of it's based off just reps in the matchup. Uh, maybe he had more success by not going all in and by pacing out each individual threat and forcing Sane to have, or forcing his opponent rather, to have answers over and over again. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it comes down to it, uh, it it feels like somewhat underwhelming uh, if you see it like that. But he's not. Honestly, he's not out of it yet. 
this turn he can push through uh, everything. He still has a good board uh, to kind of work with. Uh, and he didn't have to expend too much to get this online. Yeah, and I mean, this is an intimidating board still. Yeah. But we know that Saiyan has this covered. He's got Mass to Spell. Uh, he's got that Plague of Death. And he, I mean, he even has um, ways to, to be really cheeky through things like Murazon to, in, in certain spots of this matchup. But yeah, uh, not really going to be sweating it here. The Mass to Spell really shuts this down. Yeah. Also, if you go off, go off too hard with Ka with Kael'thas and make a huge board with like Glowfly Swarm and Gift of the Wild, Sain could just play Murazon and do the exact same thing. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not now that it would be that valuable because Sain would play a card that would draw him like five cards and probably overdraw a bunch or whatever. Right. Um, but just kind of a funny thing to, to point out. All right. Still, Sian has not had to use any AoE clears. He did use Master Spell, but is still just kind of picking apart this board with the minions that he's been able to develop. Uh, still holding on to his Plague of Death, that is his only copy, so he wants to make sure that that's kind of the nail in the coffin. And still has a lot of those other AoE spells in the deck, like Holy Nova, Breath of the Infinite, that he hasn't drawn into. So, and knows he has time. Still he's got, healthy. He's got he's got some time. Priest can easily undo that time that you think you have. Eddie going for a Mount Cellar board. Perhaps can get a board that can threaten Saiyan just a little bit. Okay. Moonfire's doing a good job picking things apart. And does not have the uh, Breath of the Infinite or the Holy Nova. Which would be just the uh, the nuts in that situation. He really does not want to have to use uh, Plague of Death yet. About... Have you ever played Murz onto a Mount Cellar situation? Uh, no. No. I have not, and, I, and I'm now starting to think about it. Actually, maybe I have. But I don't Either way, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how that dynamic necessarily works, because uh, I've never played it or seen it myself. Um, it seems like most people just have the AoE like, a good portion of the time. Uh, seems like Saiyan's just going to go for the manual clear here for a lot of stuff. And I mean, with the penances, the Holy Smites, Bone Wraith, and just putting stuff in the way, he should be safe from any kind of Savage Roar. I don't think, I think the frustrating part is he doesn't have a way to kill the second Mount Cellar guaranteed. Unless yeah. he, oh, uh, sorry, with the Convincing Infiltrator. Yeah. But he could, you know, double smite. That's fine. Set up stuff. Does he have enough mana to hero power as well? Does not look like he does. Yeah, he just kind of wants to pick apart the board. Right. Yeah, he, if, he, if he clears it off, he does not have enough mana hero power. Yeah. I mean, taking a look at what Eddie has left, he has a Soul of the Forest, uh, a um, Glowfly Swarm. Uh, other than that, it's just a lot of kind of card draw. He does have a Rising wing, Winds left, which can kind of be a, you know, build a board in a box. Uh, he's got the Savage Roar. Um, no minion development, though, outside of, like, the Eagles from Rising Winds and the Glowfly Swarm. So that's where the, uh, I think, the issue for Eddie comes in, uh, where he has no exotic Mount Sellers left. He doesn't play Forest Aid. So essentially, this is his board now. He's got to win the game with this and some glow flies. That's it. Yep. So very uh, much just going to invest everything into this final series of pushes. And he's got more card draw, but not really anything to back it up anymore. 
And this uh, this looks like Saiyan should run away with it. And in fact, Saiyan might be good just to play Murzon here, so that way he also uh, overflows and refills his hand. Yeah, no, that could be a good point. Because he's not in, in danger with just this board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He even gets uh, an extra mana crystal because of the interview. Yep. <laughs> and now we're most likely going to see all those AoE cards that were eluding him for the entire game flood in. Holy Nova, Double Breath of the right. Infinite, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. He didn't even need them. That's the crazy yeah. part. Well, so I did the the hypergeometric calculator, and uh, if it is eight cards, it is actually roughly like around that zone, 23, 25% to have that card. Um, so in the okay. end, uh, you, All you right. could, it, it's kind of do or die. Then you get a slight buff to that because you could also discover it from the two renews in the deck. True, true. Boom. So the number of successes in the population actually isn't eight. So it's higher. It's, it's slightly higher. Yeah, because then you'd have to also do the math of, you know, how likely is Renew to hit those a AoE cards. Uh, so, you know, a way way more math than I'm willing to yeah. do. Dan, you're and welcome then, And there's to. also other things, too, because I don't think this uh, accounts for mulligans, because um, it's a basic calculation that I did in, like, 30 seconds. So, okay. Uh, the idea is that it was a tough position for A to be in, and we kind of expected the Priest to run away with the game there, and Saiyan has, and now we turn to Warlock, uh, and I think that was what uh, Eddie was banking on. So I anticipate this game four to be a Warlock versus Druid because I think Eddie wants to kill the Warlock with the Druid before going to the Priest. And Warlock versus Priest has been pretty even, actually. It's been a 50-50 mashup down the middle. Yeah, and pretty good sample size as well. So that is the one I'm looking forward to. But Druid is uh, pretty much that and Highlander Mage, I think, are the two... Uh, Warlock counters, uh, so to speak, not in their fullest. I do think Alcon Warlock is, is just one of the strongest decks in the metagame right now, across the board. Have seen some players have success with Zoo. Felcane actually qualified to the Europe semifinals for their Swiss Week 1 um, just earlier today. And uh, Tom also almost did. Ah, okay. Uh, well, Tom, Tom, for better or for worse, will bring Warlock until the day he dies. I think that is, I mean, it, it's been something that I think has been in every single one of his championships appearances. Um, yeah. He loves or at least you. his world championship appearances for 2014 and 2017. Yeah. And I want to say that for the seasonal championship, he also brought it. And he also brought it every single week of Hearthstone Grandmasters <laughs> yep. last year. So I I feel like uh, Tom is just a Warlock fan. Um, yeah, I, I really hope that he keeps bringing Warlock till the day he retires. Yeah. <laughs> Which be and I think he will, Dan. I think you will get your wish. Oh, yeah. I love it. All right. So a lot of ramp picked up for Eddie, but... Still a ways to go. He's got to find something to put that those pieces together. Uh, no Mount Seller, no Goldfly Swarm, no Kael'thas just yet. Yep, Devoted Maniac can help summon more 1-1s one onto the board and just build up enough of a... Just, I mean, it's kind of like his own, uh, w you know, board that it's very similar to Druid to mirror that, so that Dark Skies has um, a pretty good chance of just clearing everything. Uh, part of the challenge is that I feel like Warlock is fairly reliant on Dark Skies and Crazy Netherwing, um, the dragon that deals three damage to all characters. And when you don't have that, or when you have it and it doesn't clear everything, you're very, very sad. So Druids often try to uh, play around those cards the most. But if you have these demons and imps on the board preemptively, uh, you're often in a, in a position where you could uh, easily get those clears and be very efficient. However, Saint had a very oh. inefficient turn. Oh my god, he just drew the game boss. Oh my gosh. Problem he is... He does lack a little card draw, but yeah. that's what Wrath and Rising Winds can help with. But if Wrath picks up something good here... Overflow, perhaps? Oh. Okay. That is a good one. Um, yes, why, why not, right? Yeah, well, he doesn't have hand space. 
Well, yeah, you Kael'thas coin and then fungal yeah. fortunes. Yeah, and then hope that you pick up one of your other cards or all sorts. He's got to go, though. Saiyan already kind of <laughs> burying his head in the face. Like, okay, well, let's see what you can do. Well, Saiyan does have the hand to deal with this. He's got, like, every bit of removal. He's got Plague of Flames, oh, double gosh. Dark Skies with both Artificers, the Moag Artificers. He, so he's he's set. He's ready to deal with what most of the things that's thrown at him. Right. This Glowfly Swarm can also get oh, a uh, Soul of the Forest. Soul of the Forest, too. Oh, my goodness. This is crazy amount of power. It goes to show you why Kael'thas uh, getting that nerf bat next week. Although, truth be told, having that coin in the hand, Eddie could have still uh, played that Kael'thas' turn in the same fashion. Yeah, it would have been, been same. a little bit harder. Yeah. Same, except he just would have had a coin, had to use the coin. <laughs> All right, so how do you deal with this? Okay, so two. what happens if you... Double Dark Skies here. Um, well, you just summon a board full of two twos. That didn't really do enough. So yeah, he's gonna clear with the Rain of Fire and then Dark Skies. Yeah, that looks good to me. Yeah, but I mean, he's not gonna kill everything. No, but it'll clear a good chunk. That's not really a good chunk. I don't know. That's the best he could do, though. Yeah. And I think Saiyan's just kind of like, well, you know, that's I can't really do much more. And Eddie really looking forward to getting card draw. Innervate's a whiff, though. And if he yeah. misses here... Uh, that's, I guess that's a reroll? Yeah. Gets to try again. Did he whiff again? Oh, oh he whiffed again! And Overgrowth does not give you excess mana. This is something that Gallon asked me to test. On my, uh, on my, when I was, when I was playing with him, he was like, "Hey, can you test something for me? Can you overgrowth on nine? I'm too scared to do it at my rank." And I'm like, "Wow, guy, I'm just gonna sacrifice my ladder stars." And yeah. so we overgrowth, and nothing happened, and I lost. Yeah, you can, you can't even coin or innervate overgrowth at nine right. mana to get excess mana. <laughs> it just doesn't work. Well, that that was always the case. If you innervated or coined wild growth, um, yeah, and you had ten slash eight or some ten slash nine, it never worked. But overgrowth, we weren't sure about the the sequencing, like of how the game recognized those actions. Like if it gives you the crystals one at a time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's very much a burst, very similar to how um, like swarm of locusts, I believe, works. Yeah. Uh, and the the side quest. Yeah. So San picks up the mortal coil. Uh, his Stark ha Sky's hand is seven strong, so he'll have seven procs. Oh, sorry, six rather with the Moa Artificer. So it's looking un unlikely that he's going to be able to deal with it, but he can use Plague of Flames here if he tosses in the Moa Artificer and just has to. It just leaves a two-two. Yeah, which I think is manageable, especially after how many resources Eddie used and also how little he has left. Mm. Um, but any he like can pretty coil much first, right? Uh, oh, interesting. Oh, I guess no, he doesn't have enough mana. He doesn't to have coil. mana. Yeah. Like Eddie has so many draws that like he both exotic mount sellers here would be the nuts because he could exotic mount seller coin overgrowth excess mana and just kind of go off. But right. Goldfly Swarm, not the best draw because he a whiff. just doesn't have... Yeah, it's kind of a whiff. He's going to need it to win the game, most likely. Um, he is more likely to draw something really good than not. Like you said, the Exotic Mount Seller and Overflows, both of them are still in the deck right now. Yep. Uh, Gift of the Wild is kind is definitely a whiff here if you end up going for Oath Growth. Savage Roar is also a whiff. So... There's a reasonable chance here that Eddie still misses, and he's going to go for the overgrowth and try to look. And he finds a nourish, but it's going to take all of his mana. Yeah, but at least it gives him something to do next turn. That's true. That is big. Unless it's better for Eddie to develop now, because he is technically setting up a lethal at that point, and Saiyan is in a position where he needs to start life tapping to regain his yeah. cards. So let's say he he Goldfly swarms here and pushes for 
two. He put it on the seven. Uh, if a crazed Netherwing came down, he'd go to four. Savage would be hero lethal. Power. Uh, yeah. He could have like uh, Glowfly Swarm coined a hero power, and then crazed Netherwing would have uh, killed Saiyan as well. Because he's going for the life tap. I, I really debated if I if I was in Saiyan's position if whether or not I would try to tempo out a frozen Shadow Weaver just to get an extra 4-3 on the board ahead of it. Because when you're starting when you start to get to card number 26 in the Druid deck, you gotta expect that they have everything. Yep. Overflow also kind of puts Eddie in a really awkward position, so I, I think that card has been turned off here. So this has got to be an exotic sound, sound, Mount Cellar turn. Yep. He can even go... He could go for Glowfly Swarm this turn. Yeah, Glowfly Swarm, but I think his board would be pretty much max anyways. Yeah. Savage Roar to push through this 4-5. Summons a King Mukla. See the importance of having one extra health onto those minions to stop Eddie from clearing the board or pushing that damage. Oh, was that a Veiled Worshipper? Ooh, oh, big time pickup here for Saiyan. So he can clear off three minions here uh, with Frozen Shadow Weaver plus the uh, Plague of Flames. Yeah. Oh, he can actually cut off everything with the Mortal Coil. Yeah. yeah. So, and he can yep. freeze the face to block some damage. Not much damage. I mean, it's one damage, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> uh, everything counts. Yeah. When it's when it's this tight, and you know that there's another potential Mount Cellar, but your opponents used Coin and Innervates and Moonfires and almost all the cheap spells. I, I like it. Yeah, and you just have to go for it. He still has Craze Netherwing active, so... Eddie, Eddie might be in trouble here. Oh my, this is a very bad position to be as a druid. I was not really expecting it to pan out this way. What's left in his deck here? He has uh, another overflow? He has another overflow, an exotic mount seller. A power of the wild, perhaps? Uh, soul of the forest. Oh, soul of the forest, okay. So maybe he was hoping for soul of the forest to combo with the second glowfly swarm. Um, but now it doesn't look like there's a pan out that like wins him the game. I'm not sure. Because if he overflows, it just heals Saiyan back up. And he's got one more spell left in the deck. So he would just trade a spell for a spell. So this is the biggest that Gloofly Storm's ever getting. Uh, is three. And then he uh, just has I, I to hope it sticks this, so he can gift to the wild. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly it. I think you just got to hope that this can get there, but we know Saiyan's got it covered in a couple of ways here. He's got Craze Netherwing and he has Dark Skies. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about Dark Skies is it gives you enough mana to Kronks and get that Galakron, which I think is the most important aspect here, because Galakron will give you life and give you some counter offense. <laughs> and Eddie with such an unfortunate pan out to, to have most of the potent cards in the bottom half of his deck, actually even the bottom 10 cards of his deck, really needs to be bailed out here. San, uh, sitting up here, sitting upright, because the fight isn't over. This is still uh, a point of struggle. Yeah, it still is. Um, like he, the one out for Eddie would have been getting the uh, Hunter Prime card. Uh, that would have been like another wave of threats, but unfortunately it's too late. Now, to be fair, Eddie did have a pretty nuts opening, right? On turn, I think it was turn six, uh, because he went wild growth, uh, overgrowth. Uh, he had like the, a nuts Kael'thas turn that gave him soul of the forest and Kael'thas plus the uh, additional buff to the minions. So he did have a pretty nuts opening. It's just like his follow-up after his first wave was dealt with. He had that one turn where he had Kael'thas that lived on board and couldn't capitalize on it because he had like three whiff draws in a row. Uh, that was kind of where it went sour. Um, but you can see just how much removal the Warlock packs, which is kind of crazy. Uh, Saiyan even has the additional removal package uh, because he plays double Reign of Fire.
So he plays double Rain of Fire, double Artificer, double Dark Skies. So he's got like maximum, I'm not going to let you have a board for as long as possible kind of hand or kind of deck. And it ends up working out because he'll move on to the yep. winner's match. Yep, and I'm sure Radiance is happy to see that because Saiyan losing Eddie would mean that Saiyan versus Muzzy in the elimination uh, stage, which I feel like is a matchup we've seen a lot. Um, and you don't want that team kill. So that is going to be coming up next uh, with Empanizado versus Saiyan. And what a welcome party it would be for Empanizado if he is able to take down not just Muzzy, but Saiyan. Uh, both players from Radiance and two of the best players to ever do it in the Americas for Hearthstone. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be really fun to check it out. And, you know, Empanizado has a lot of momentum given that he's survived the Swiss and he's taken down Muzzy, who was the group leader. Um, he was the number two seed based off the Swiss performance. Um, and we'll see how that ends up panning out. In the meantime, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to start the third series of the day here at the Hearthstone Grand Masters for America. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.